Well, I've been back a uh, couple of weeks now and I've had a bit of a break from filming. I'm just going to stand in the shelter of uh, the fishing ring protection vessel here. So like I say, we've been back a couple of weeks now. I've taken a break from filming, um, gainers off visiting family. We've done a few things. We've moved the boat from Abercorn Basin to Bangor and that all went smoothly, I'm glad to say. But I thought I was going to get till about February, at least, before I started recording my famous windy day in Bangor, or should it be blowy day in Bangor blogs. But <laughs> it's October the 5th. <laughs> And the wind is howling around me already. It's just so unfair. <laughs> but um, I'm pleased to say that Salty Lass is riding very nicely in her slip. She's got her nylons on and they're doing a great job. And um, if you can see her over my shoulder there, she's just quite happily stretching back and forward on the nylon lines and inside the boat it is extremely pleasant. All right, Captain Chaos, what's going on? Well, um, we, we're back and um, one of the things that happened while we were away, I was on um, Volupia and he said So this boat was perfect for us because there's so much um, storage space everywhere, every little nut and cranny uh, there's, there's perfect for sticking and as, as the months go on we've got a rule we said if we haven't used something for a year it goes so we're still in our first year now, but we're still starting to figure out what we do and what we don't need on board. So hopefully this time in six months, there'll be a lot more room for actually boat stuff. Um, and uh, anyway, it got me thinking um, about the stuff that we have on Salty Lass. Was the stuff on Salty Lass that we could get rid of? But also it gives you a great excuse to clean out the lockers, check what you've got and basically ditch stuff like um oh yeah i call this one of our horse tools because well, it could be used for shoeing a horse <laughs> basically yeah but this was left by the previous owner we have not used it for the entirety we've been on the boat which is over three years now i think it's time for it to go this could turn out very badly you're aware of that It'll be a it will be a big job because the amount of stuff that you just carry is just unbelievable, really. Don't go in there; you'll never come out again. Woo! I've got cramp. <laughs> oh god! This is something we haven't used. I've got cramp. This is something we haven't used for three years. It was left by our previous owners and we've not used it once. So I think it's uh, time to lose. Oh dear God. So this is what it is. You see the amount of rust that just fell off it? Well, yeah, okay, fair enough. So what we have got in, in here, but underneath all this, is uh, another way that you can attach to uh, a mooring buoy. Uh, basically, it's uh, for lassoing them. <laughs> and you can tell it's never been used as the cloth just comes off in droves. Ah, here we are. I think it's maybe meant to be a bridle, actually. Huh? I think it's maybe meant to be a bridle. It could be a bridle. Basically, you clutch it to both cleats, and that bit there, the chain goes through the, the ring on the boy, maybe? Well, maybe we could use it for that purpose, then, for a, a bridle, um, and have a look at it for that, but we've certainly not used it in the three years. No, we haven't. So, and I certainly wouldn't throw it over a over a um, certainly no. wouldn't throw it over a mooring boy because when I was club treasurer, one of our boys, somebody did that and they pulled the float clean off. Yes, they did, didn't it they? It was a hollow float, and the thing it was, was when they when boat. they pulled it off, they had hundred quid's worth of mooring ball wound up in the bottom of the Mersey. Yeah, so um, I wasn't best pleased. No, 
But this is what we've got, and we've never used it. To be honest, it's an abomination. Have you seen the lashings on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, All right, well, I'm going to leave that one with you for now, and I'm sure we'll come back to it later. I'm sure we will. But I, I don't know. I mean, so should we just lose it? Cause... I won't cry if we do. Yeah, okay. Don't cry for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's use it or lose it, but I seem to have lost Gainer. Oh, <laughs> there she is. Well, I was just contemplating on happiness in that happiness is having the time to do what you want to do. I don't know. <laughs> I know cleaning lockers is not what everybody wants to do. But I'm having a great time. I'm cleaning salty lass, um, getting rid of stuff, you know, I'm paring down. I'm loving it. Well, I cleaned um, salty lass from uh, stern to uh, the bow. Um, and um, while I was doing it I was um, writing down all the winter projects we want to do um, because we're on the boat three years there's not as many winter projects um, because we've more or less got the boat the way we want it but there are a few things that could be improved so hopefully you'll come on board for those um, we've also got a video uh, that we filmed in the summer <laughs> it was going to be an extra so I hope you'll be wanting to uh, enjoy that but really what I want to do is ask uh, because there'll be some talks we'll talk about various things um, so if there's anything that you want us to talk about um, um, it could be technical issues, it can be, um, I'm thinking about things like tides, um, how to predict how the water's going to be, all sorts of stuff, you know, learning about geography and how that affects the sea. It could be anything, but we need your feedback um, because we need to know what you want us to talk about. Um, the other thing, just in case I was bored in between projects and stuff, um uh, Beverly's got me making some t-shirt designs, I have to be honest, they're very simple. <laughs> People we, have asked us a few times for when are we going to set up a t-shirt shop and the answer is no. Basically yes. <laughs> yeah they're just good at, they're, they're just words um, and obviously I'm a salty lass deal with it will be on there but they're just simple designs and uh, so if you do want one of those uh, have a look in the links below and um, that's about it really. I should warn our viewers that we haven't actually got the shop up and running as yet and the video goes out tomorrow morning in about what, 18 hours time? Something like that. So, so I've got to render it yet, upload it and get it all in place. And, 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 get, and get a t-shirt shop going. <laughs> Just in case I had nothing to do. Let's go get coffee first. Yeah. Let's go turn this off. Yeah. So uh, why are we filling up the water tanks, Beth? Because your sister's coming and her husband and she's a big Game of Thrones fan. And so we've got to do the Northern Ireland tour. You know, Giant's Causeway, Dark Hedges, Game of Thrones, things like that. So we're getting the boat all prepped for guests. They're going to be here for a week. It's going to be mayhem. Yeah. <laughs>
sorting out our sterling charger, this thing down here, um, it converts AC electric from the mains and charges the, the batteries up on the boat. Now this particular unit um, can charge three batteries, it has three outputs and we have two battery banks. So there's a wee bit of a problem there and what the installer of the unit had done was he joined two of the outputs together and put them to one battery and the other output went to the other set of batteries. And the way that they did it was, for some reason, the high output, the two together, went to the starter battery and the low output went to the highest batteries. And that's why we were having the fridge issue. The fridge drains a lot of charge and it wasn't, the batteries were getting thumped. I mean, it's winter time, we've got all the heating running, we've got very little light coming uh, onto the solar panels, they're not working. And the batteries were just getting lower than they should have done. So what we're going to do is there's a little diagram just here and you can see it and we're just going to check that the these dip switches that are marked here are set correctly for the the batteries we have and then we're going to take the leads of the chargers and swap them around so that we will have the house bank on the two units joined together the high output and the starter battery on the low output so this means that the house batteries will have far more charge and current available to keep them charged up now this thing knows when the batteries are on float and it sorts it all out but it would be nice to have the high outputs on the high usage devices and the low outputs on the low usage devices rather than the other way around. Okay well with our um, charger um, there's supposed to be some switches um, for you know type of use we can't find those we have got the um, switches for what type of battery and I've checked that they're correct uh, because ours is a, a sealed uh, lead acid uh, so that's okay uh, but what we have is we've got two wires running to the starter but for us um, as I say two bits. Can I clarify here? Yeah. This unit has the capability to charge up to three devices Yes. And the advice is for all unused outputs, join them together. Yes. And since we have two batteries and three outputs, yeah. they've joined one unused one to another output and they've joined it to the starter battery, not the leisures. And we use the leisures much more than we use the starter. Okie dokie, so all I've done is I now have... Um, two um, charging units on the leisure batteries and I just have the one on the starter battery but already it's having an effect because the voltage um, at the panel is much higher now for the leisure batteries. Uh, what we're going to do is wait 24 hours and hopefully we're done on this particular little problem. Okay make it quick my coffee's getting cold. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a couple of um, days since we uh, changed the wiring configuration on the AC to DC uh, converter and already um, you can see the major difference. This is our app that runs from the solar and before the change you can see that the solar was basically putting in an awful lot of bulk and this is where we had the issue uh, because there was, it it never went on to float. It was a run of very, very heavy, cloudy, stormy days. Exactly. It was a run of very stormy days. And you can see that there's no change in the colour. Um, but basically, that was causing our fridge to uh, run continuously. But now, since we've done the change, here they are. It go, They go on to float very quickly. Um, and... Yeah, we've solved that one. One change and we've solved it. Basically, the batteries are now continuously on float. Correct, which is what you should expect from your AC to DC you see, battery charger. Battery yeah. charger. Yeah. You should expect your batteries to be on float all the time. Whereas um, the house weren't. <laughs> Is now. Is now. Right, can I have my coffee now? Okay, I'll let you have your coffee. Thank you. Oh, yeah.